They well, lost listen, that game. Hey, Michael, they had over 500 yards. Hey, hey, Michael, once upon a time, our colleague, Ron Borges, I think he said it to a fan. I he think did. it was so, to a fan. So arrogant. He once, so arrogant. He, he once said... I know the line. The difference between... He said, the difference between me and you is you think I know. So, with yeah. that, Charles, I just was kind of talking about what I think. I tend to think <laughs> you know. So, go ahead and educate us, Charles, when it comes to this Lamar Jackson situation. How's his agent feeling right now? Okay, well, first <laughs> off, you use two qualifiers. All right, so let's start there. If he continues to do this and if he does not get hurt, those are two qualifiers you cannot ignore. What you're, I, I get it. I, he's winning right now. I'm with you. Like, I, I thought we discussed this before. He could play at an MVP level. He is that man right now, okay? And, but we cannot walk away from the element of risk, which is there, and it's okay to talk about it. It's real. No one's making this up. He mm. has his money on the table, but it's a roulette wheel. He's hit red. He's hit black. He's hit red. He's hit black. That's great. If he can hit that 17 times in a row, hit it through the playoffs, He's going to be the highest paid player in football next offseason. I'm going to call that right now. Now, that said, if he doesn't hit one week, if a Justin Herbert situation happens and he has crack cartilage, if a Mac Jones situation happens and he has a high ankle sprain and is screaming, getting carried to the locker room, okay? If a Tua Tungavaloa situation happens and he slams his head on the turf, but it's a back injury, Okay, there's a multitude of things that can happen here, okay, that can change dramatically this bet. Just as it did with Dak Prescott, the difference was Dak Prescott had an owner who said, I'm paying that guy. I have been through the quarterback abyss. I'm not doing this again. Oh, I remember that was contentious. It was, I, I, it, was, it was contentious, but it was more contentious about price prior to that really right. happening. But once the injury sure. happened, Jerry was unequivocal. I'm paying it. He's getting paid. Jerry said it immediately. He's getting paid. So you have to hope that ownership would take that same stance. We're going to pay this guy. And again, by the right. way, um, you know, you're talking about a situation with Dak Prescott too. The contract he did, everybody knew immediately it was going to be exceeded by, a, by multiple <clears throat> players after he did that. Even right. ownership in Cowboys knew that. Not so sure if you're going to pay Lamar Jackson, he's going to go to the top of the heap, which I think is absolutely possible. I don't know if that gets exceeded quickly, okay? Especially given no what's going on with Joe Burrow right now, what's going on with Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert, so, yeah. There is well, let me Let me throw this there. at you. You are let me, right, but he is me, winning, but that can change. But let me, let me, if I may, let me counter with this. Allow me to retort. Uh, let, me, let me counter with this, if I may. The reason the injury thing, so all the injuries you laid out, whether it's Mac Jones, high ankle sprain, doesn't play like Lamar Jackson. Tua Tagovailoa gets hurt in the pocket, uh, or gets slammed to the turf in the pocket. Um, Justin Herbert, who is very athletic, gets his ribs shattered on a hit in the pocket. All I'm, all I would counter with Charles is that part of the wait for it narrative around Lamar mm. was that his style of play lends itself to injury further injury risk injuries at quarterback or at any position are just naturally a part of the game. So that's one they're going to yes. be taking if they invest in money in him. They're going to be investing money in any quarterback that could potentially get hurt. That's one Two, that's right. when it comes to whether he keeps this up. He may not continue to put up 300 and 100 or 100 yard rushing games every week, but he's already been brilliant in the regular season. He's all, now I sound like his agent. He's already got an MVP. It's not like he's an unproven commodity in the regular season. So there's absolutely no legitimate argument at this point for the Ravens not to give him what he wants with all due respect to the Ravens who you know I respect the hell out of them other than well we just don't want to do a fully guaranteed contract. We or just, we, or, we just, we, or we, playoffs. What's the what's the counter argument? Or they or, might or they, they might play the playoff great game. consistently in the playoffs. Yes. Okay. Well, first off, see a need, fill it, and congratulations on filling that need as Lamar Jackson's agent. <laughs> Secondly, I don't think he needs one, though. <laughs> Secondly, he's doing great uh, by himself. But, okay, it's still an argument now. The deal's not done until it gets in the barn. Let's not. Let's let's not. Okay, let's let's be patient here. Um, look, I, first off, the deal. Let's talk about the deal for a second here. Okay. Um, I think that this isn't just about 
Deshaun Watson and the fully guaranteed money. I think it's years, too. I don't know why mm-hmm. people aren't talking about this. Yeah, he doesn't want six the years. Ba- the Baltimore Ravens want six years. Lamar wants four. Yeah, he does, okay? doesn't want that. Yeah. He wants yep, four totally. fully guaranteed. That's what he wants to work with. He wants, you know, he wants, like, how Dak did it. I mean, not obviously, you know, different player, different caliber, but in terms of the monetary implications, he wants how Kirk did right. it when he went to the Vikings. He wants to go back to free agency and then go back yeah. to free agency and keep yeah. re-upping. You keep re-upping yeah. in short-term increments. It's like keep an betting NBA on yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? When yeah. when you retire, we'll someday all of a sudden look up and it'll be like Rihanna. We'll be like, Lamar Jackson's a billionaire? <laughs> he's a billionaire? When did that, how did Lamar, that happen? Lamar Jackson performing at halftime? Like, he's he's like, a, no, what? Like, like when, when did this dude become a billionaire? Let me go do my research. Right. This is how you become a billionaire because hey. you make you make $600 million on the field, you make $400 million off the field, and you retire a billionaire. That's the track he wants hey, to Joe. be on. It takes time. Hey, hey real quick on, on money. We're going to pay whatever bills we got to pay. Uh, Stay right there. We're going to take this break as we catch up on time. We'll come back and, and talk about some other stuff with you, okay? All right, uh, back with Charles Robinson. Uh, Charles, you know, we were talking about uh, Lamar. I just want to ask you one more question about Lamar before we move on to uh, some other things that happened in football yesterday. What would you say, 1 to 10, the odds uh, or the number you're, you're – comfortable saying Lamar going back to the Ravens is is it a nine is it a 10 it is a six if if this contract if it's not dealt with this year what number would you put on that Lamar back to the Ravens I I think I think at this trajectory okay um, and if they take a step forward to the playoffs it's a 10 I think if he gets hurt I think if something catastrophic happens and his play takes a left turn, if he suffers some type of, you know, Cam Newton, potentially career altering injury, you know, shoulder injury, something like that. I think that would change the landscape. And frankly, I do believe there has to be some playoff success. I think there's going to be pause. If let's say there's a first round checkout, you know, if if you start to see the same thing over and over again, you have to sit there and say, what, what gets us over the hump and, if it was a different owner, I might feel differently about this, but I think Steve Bashotti is, I could see this being like the Bidwill Kyler Murray situation. If they don't like, if he doesn't like every single thing he sees on the field, I could see this being more difficult than it has to be. So that's a good segue like, uh, into the, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Mike, yeah, go, ahead. So, go ahead. No, no, just go ahead. into a quarterback. We've, we've gone 48 minutes, Michael, and not talked about, what appears to be the best team in the NFC, one of only two teams that are undefeated. We'll see about the Giants tonight. But Jalen Hurts, I mean, coming into this season, Jalen Hurts yeah. was very much on the hot seat, under the microscope. All right, we got all this talent that Howie Roseman and the organization has put around you. This is your year to show and prove. And like, he was on the hot seat. He's like, no, nah, I'm going to be on fire. And I mean, yeah. my manager's out here killing it. Has he answered all the Eagles' questions, or much like Lamar, they needed to see more and see him do it in the postseason? So when I spent time with the Eagles for the season, um, I was talking to Nick Sirianni and we were talking about measure. Like, how do you want to measure him at this point? And Sirianni talked about the hard data stuff, looking at ball locate, like all these little things they can measure in terms of how he makes his throws, arm strength, all these different things. And he said, we feel like we're in a really great spot there. We feel like his everywhere he, uh, where he's going, that path is precisely where we need it to go. Now, Sirani was like, now I want to see the leadership end of it. He said, I want to see him marry the progress that he is making as a quarterback, as a passer, as a runner, as a decision maker with his ability to lead the team. I think he's passing it, and I think they feel like he's passing it with with flying colors right now. The team's rallying around him. Um, You know, I love Darius Slay saying the thing about all Batmans, no Robins. Um, I, I think that is the mentality that Darius Uh, not only Darius has, but I think Jalen Hurts has. And the one thing that I think is really interesting when when you talk to people. Devontae Smith got it too. (laughs) Devontae Smith too. And and (laughs) a couple of those throws to Devontae Smith, Hurts has the confidence in his guys to say, I'm going to put it in a place where I think you can make the play. Okay, because some quarterbacks are are afraid to throw 50-50 balls or they throw them to the wrong guy or he's developed a chemistry Mm. with Smith 
he's got the chemistry with A.J. Brown, which has been remarkable that it's it's developed as quickly as it has. But I think when you talk to people around the league, what's really interesting is they're like, there are the, there was this number of things he needed to do to get better as a quarterback. And they people who are looking at him from the outside in are saying, we're seeing him do that. He's getting right. better as a player. He's getting better as a passer. He's getting better as a decision maker. He's reading things in front of him all these progressive steps and we can talk about all oh, coach's son and all these different things. There's no guarantee that happens, but for this dude, for whatever reason, he has stacked everything up. And now we're, again, we're early in. I hate to make big claims now, but right. the Eagles went into this season knowing if this is the dude who we think it can be, it opens up a world of possibility for us to not to, to know we got our franchise quarterback. Now right. all the picks and all these things, now we can build around him in a way that opens that Super Bowl window for an extended period. Hey, last time you were on the show, uh, you told me to take it easy on Nathaniel Hackett. <laughs> um, I, hate, I hate to spend a whole lot of time on this game because I didn't spend a whole lot of time watching it, quite right. honestly. This but is Nathaniel a receipt. Hackett went out. This section, no, no, this, no, this no, section no, no, should be no, called no, no, Because he had a good point. No, he had a good point. He had a good point. But nonetheless, Nathaniel Hackett must be nice. To have this kind of grace, they went out and got him some help in the game management category. <laughs> um, now they sit at two and one, which it could be worse. They could be Josh McDaniels Raiders and be zero and three. But basically, mm -hmm. like you know, take us inside the Broncos organization and their and their where they are two and one, but their offense. They thought they had their franchise quarterback leaves quite a bit to be desired to this point with the, with the quarterback and the head coach. Spoke to someone this morning. Okay, so I can I can I'll do this in 60 seconds, so we don't have to spend a ton of time on. Um, number one, I think they were hurt as a number of teams were by the fact that they did they had a new quarterback come in, offensive change, new head coach, play calling dues, all these different things, and they didn't play starters. Okay, in the preseason, and I think they knew and they accepted it's probably going to be a little sloppy early. I think, you know, they're, they're a little surprised at some of the walls that they've run into. However, I think they know, and, I, and they're not the only team, by the way, that mm -hmm. maybe we start to approach the preseason a little bit different and not just sit everybody or we suffer the consequences early. So that's number one. Number two, going getting help up in the booth, okay? People are clowning them for that. That's unfortunate because the fact of the matter is they identified a need, okay? They went out and they addressed it. And a lot of head coaches would say, no way, man, I, that's a bad look for me. That makes it look like I, I'm not ready for the job. I got an ego. I'm not going to let that happen. It was the opposite. He wanted to address it. He wanted to fix it. He worked with the general manager. They went out. They got the help he needed, which I think was a positive. Number three. He might be a trendsetter. <laughs> um, hey, hey, the only coach could listen, use it. <laughs> well, well, yeah, you're right. And that is exactly right. Thank you for saying that. Number three. I think there's an element of Russell Wilson that we saw last night, particularly in the fourth quarter. He's going to have to start to step into this and go, hey, a little of this, I'm going to have to take on myself here too. I'm, I'm the $250 million quarterback. There's a drive. I need to put myself out there. Hey, we don't want to do that all the time. I can hurt myself. But I saw a Russell Wilson there where I was like, that's that dude. That's who they will follow. That's the guy. That's the leader. That's the dude who you paid going out and making the plays necessary and injecting the the juice when you needed it. He did that. Okay. I think that's a positive, um, you know, Quinn Miners, who's going to be their best offensive lineman, by the way, long-term, he's going to be a Zach Martin type. When he comes back, they're going to run behind him and you're going to realize what a big deficit it was not to have him, not having Tim Patrick, not having your best safety. And yet your defense plays really well, you know, Jerry, yeah. Judy, I don't know. They're going to have to continue to work on that, that offensive depth chart around the skill position skill position pieces around him and also commit to Javante Williams all I'm saying here they're two and one okay yeah ask the Raiders if they would like to be two and one saying. playing or they trade football. places in a okay. second they trade in places second. in a second so they, they Mike, you got the, are lucky they got time to work this out is what I'm saying we don't have time to get into Eric B enemy and Patrick Mahomes like we wanted to we it was it. fine they're also it two and fine. one it was oh it was it nothing was it was they nothing. don't want to be two and one Eric B. Enemy told me last time I saw him that Patrick Mahomes' daddy long time ago gave him permission to put paws on him if necessary. That relationship, they've been together so long. Mahomes putting in plays at the last Holy minute. Fine. He's taking ownership of that offense. That was nothing shady McCoy. 
Cut it out. No. It was a, it was a, <laughs> listen, that's a fiery coach. The family squabble. Okay? Yes. If you know anything about Eric Bieniemy, fiery coach and a quarterback who's always going to want to go for it. That's it. That's right, Charles. Let's argue, Charles. We love each other. We argue all the time about fantasy football and stuff. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.